A prepaid variable forward, or in short, we call it PVF, is essentially a caller, and this is combined with a margin loan. So for example, we have an investor who's holding the shares of XYZ Corp that's currently trading at $60, and the investor enters into a PVF, and this requires the dealer okay, to actually pay the investor $51 upfront in exchange for the right to then receive a variable for a number of shares from the investor in two years and it is based on a preset caller formula for example uh, there is a long put with a 55 dollar strike price and a short call with a 70 dollar strike price now how it works is uh, there is a loan okay and uh, essentially the loan here we will start off with a uh, liability of course it's a loan so there's a negative 51 dollar of liability and then uh, when the in two years time okay when the caller expires or when the loan ex matures then uh, we will assume that the investor will have to pay back $55 okay so this is the inherent uh, loan assumption in the PVF now of course uh, in the second part there is the caller so in the caller we have the long put okay and the long put comes with a strike okay of uh, 55 and uh, of course uh, there will be a premium here Okay, so since it's a, it's a long put, so let's put P0, and then uh, there's a short call, and the short call comes with a strike of 70, and then uh, since it's a short, it's a liability, so there's a premium that we, uh, we will receive when we sell it, but it, it becomes a future liability. So uh, in this case, uh, when you do a long put, uh, the payoff at uh, maturity, okay, will be uh, maximum of zero and then strike price minus the share price okay and then for the short call uh, there will be a payoff negative maximum of zero and then we'll take the share price minus uh, the strike price which is 70. so now let's assume a series of uh, share prices to see what will happen at maturity so what we'll do is uh, i'll select three prices actually okay one uh, so since our prices of the strike is between 55 to uh, 70, so I'll go for something within this, okay, between these two and something below 55 and another price above 70. So maybe, uh, let's say I'll go with uh, $50 on the lower side and then between uh, maybe I'll go for $58, let's say. Uh, you can go for 60 if you want, but I'll go for 58. Uh, and then uh, right above that, maybe I will take... Uh, something like uh, 90 okay 90 dollars okay so uh so let's see what happens there right uh so in this case what we'll look at now is uh okay so let's go with the first one 50 dollars so in the first case let's say if okay uh let's draw a line here so in this case let's assume in our first scenario scenario one the share price at maturity which is in two years time is uh, 50 dollars so in this case, uh, the loan, okay, is uh, negative 55. So let's uh, let's draw a line there. So just assuming the share price is 50. So here we will still have the negative 55 uh, for the loan payoff uh, that you have to pay back. Okay, then there's a long put. So in this case, the share price is below the put uh, strike. So we will, the put is in the money. So 55 minus 50. Okay, so 55 minus 50, that is uh, 5. Uh, the call option is out of the money. So net, okay, the loan uh, will be negative 50. So this is how much we will pay back to the dealer, either in the form of cash or in the form of shares. Okay, so we have to pay 50 back. Instead of paying 55, we pay 50. Now, uh, if the share price is 58, let's go for the next one. Okay, uh, this will still be negative 55. Then uh, this time the put option will be out of the money. And the call option will also be out of the money. So net, uh, the structure is negative 55. So in this case, when the share price is between 55 to 70, we will just pay negative 55, which is the loan um, payoff, okay? The, 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 the so-called principal or the future value of the loan. So nothing happens when it's between 55 to 70. You will just pay 55. Okay, and lastly, when the share price is uh, $90, okay, let's see what happens. Uh, so there's negative 55 here. The put is out of the money. And this time the call option is in the money. So that's a negative uh, 90 minus 70. 
So we only pay an additional amount of what exceeds the higher strike price. So that's a negative 20. So in total, we pay negative 75. Okay. So this gives us the full uh, picture. So for anything below 55, okay, you will pay the dealer less. Okay. Anything between 55 to 70 will pay a fixed amount, which is 55. And then for anything above 70, okay, we will pay 55. Okay, we will pay 55 plus any additional amount exceeding 70. Okay, anything exceeding 70, we will pay. So in this case, uh, it's uh, 75. So to summarize all that, if XYZ share price in two years is less than 55 and there is a physical settlement, then the investor will just deliver all of the XYZ shares. Okay, so even if the price is $50, uh, like what we, what I said earlier, then uh, the investor will deliver all the shares which is only worth $50 each. Uh, if it's a cash settlement, then the investor will pay the current value of XYZ shares in cash, okay, which is paying $50 in cash. Now, if the price is between 55 to less than 70, then uh, the investor will deliver $55 worth of shares or the investor will pay $55 in cash for a cash settlement. And if it's anything above $70, then the investor will deliver $55 worth of shares plus, okay, the value of shares above 70. So earlier I used uh, $90. So 90 minus 70 means uh, that's $20. So you will have to deliver 55 plus $20 worth in shares, which is uh, a total of uh, 75. Then uh, if, it's cash, if it's a cash settlement, then we'll just pay $75 in cash. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what's a prepaid variable forward.